story appeared to have everything together. But on the inside, he was struggling with the secret that threatened to take over his life. My name is Jimmy Needham. I'm a singer-songwriter out of Dallas, Texas, a husband, a father, an ambassador of Christ disguised as a recording artist. My friends uh, took me to one of our nearby parks. They said that there was a magazine down in, uh, under one of the swing sets or something, and sure enough, there was. And, uh, and that, for me, really just began this, this appetite that I didn't have before, that it was the thing that I longed for, the thing that I was constantly interested in finding more of. I was first exposed to pornography when I was a, uh, a fourth grader, nine years old. It took, it took maybe the better part of, of six, seven years for, for it to hit me that, hey, this is something I really can't go without. So it was my first week of my sophomore year of high school, and I had one friend who was a grade above me. His name was Brooks, and Brooks was sort of that, that guy in my school who was sort of remarkably Christian. But at the time, I just felt like, I feel like such a hypocrite hanging with this guy, me saying I love the Lord, and I really don't. I, I had no love for him. I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. We were on our way home, and I just looked over to Brooks, and I was like, hey, man, I need to... I need to talk to you about something. And so for the next hour, I sort of spilled my heart out to him, told him everything that I was involved in, and weeping, just something broke inside me. And just, I, I saw my struggle for what it was, uh, dark and twisted and broken and sinful. Bruce began to articulate for me the hope that he had found in this man that he kept talking about Jesus. He, he wasn't just some distant, God that I paid homage to on Sundays, but that he came uh, to, to liberate us now from our struggles, that we could, in this life, as we embrace Jesus as Savior, find freedom from sin, from addiction. My struggle actually began to increase as uh, I became a Christian and started walking with the Lord. And for the better part of four years after that, I mean, it was, it was a relentless battle and struggle for me. Wanting to love and serve Jesus and, and be free, but then constantly doing the things I didn't want to do. I remember one night, uh, I was in my room. I stumbled in sin that night. And it was sort of, for me, the last straw. You know, I felt like I've been dealing with this for so long. And so I just remember praying to God, if you're even still around, you're free to go. Because I know I'm, I'm a train wreck and I can't expect you to, to keep pardoning me and forgiving me, and, and uh, you're probably not here anyway, so. But interrupting my thought life, I saw all of a sudden a glimpse of myself kneeling on the ground alone. And then right in that instant, I saw the Lord Jesus come in and kneel down next to me. And just for the next five seconds, all that I saw was him putting his hand on my back and that was it. And it just, it broke me to think that the most holy being in the universe would be anywhere near someone like me. It was a turning point for me that I could fight this battle knowing that every time I stumble, I wouldn't have to worry about him being absent from my life. God is, is pleased with our baby steps. It wasn't for me until I got into college that something really changed, that I got to see a lot of progress made. I would just prioritize Jesus daily. I would sit with him. I would get to know him. I'd read his word. So it was a week that went by, and then two weeks that went by uh, without getting back on the Internet, and then three and four, and, and then all of a sudden I, I, I turned around and it had been six months, uh, which had never happened before. I was experiencing victory over lust. I was experiencing victory over gluttony. So I went from 260 pounds to 190 pounds. I dropped a shoe size. I met the girl who would eventually be my wife. And simultaneously, along with that, uh, God was sort of blowing open the doors of, of favor in my music career. I began playing more concerts around my college town and made an independent CD, which three months after that, 
I got a phone call from the president of Impop Records in Nashville saying that they heard my music on online and wanted to talk about signing me to their label. It's been seven years uh, since I was involved in pornography addiction. Um, and it's been a beautiful thing to see the promises of God really coming through as I desire to flee my youthful lust, like 2 Timothy 2, 22 says, uh, that he really does give me victory uh, over it. I think it's important for me that folks understand, uh, folks with any addiction understand that it doesn't have to be the thing that defines them and, and it doesn't have to be the thing that's permanent. It is that simple, consistent pursuing of Jesus that ultimately led me to freedom. No, just as Jimmy said, your addiction doesn't have to define you. If you're struggling with pornography or something else, don't give up. Pursue Jesus with all your heart. Ask him to help you, and he will lead you to freedom. If you want someone to pray with you, please contact us. During the break, you'll find out how. When we come back, a woman is rejected by her family because of one decision. Find out what it was after the break. When my parents disowned me, it was devastating. And I remember my dad calling me out of my name, telling me I was not welcome. And it just, it crushed me. Our next story was brought up in a deeply religious home yet the rules and regulations of her faith were so strict she was left feeling lonely and isolated take a look I can remember being five and getting my first Christmas gift um, from school a purple and white unicorn Cynthia Cooper's father didn't allow gifts or celebrations and when he got home he immediately threw it in the trash and I remember being crushed um, because I didn't understand. Cynthia Cooper's father and mother were Jehovah's Witnesses. Her father was an elder of the faith and strictly enforced all the rules of the religion. No celebration of holidays, birthdays, Christmas. Jesus Christ was simply a prophet, um, you know, who came to the earth. They don't believe that. God is able to talk to you. As a child, Cynthia was independent and curious. She struggled to understand her father's religion. I would ask him questions, and a lot of the questions he wouldn't answer or he'd get frustrated with me, and he pretty much, his response was, because I said so. I felt very left out at school. I felt very isolated. Um, there was really no outside influence or opportunity to be social outside of uh, the members of the church. Cynthia carried her loneliness, doubts, and questions into her teens. She dreaded the exhausting work required by the religion. The Jehovah's Witnesses believe that um, you can get your salvation through works. And so the more hours you have in field service, the more doors you knock on, the more new converts, the more valuable you are to the kingdom home. The older I got, I would play sick every Saturday. I'm not going out in field service. You know, uh, just any little way that I could avoid, um, you know, doing the works of the kingdom. The more